All right, we've got four packages today. I don't know if you can see all four of them. This is the weird one. I think I know what this is. Let's see if I can actually get away with opening it from down here. Because, you know, as a UPS package, it pretty much means that almost every base of this thing has um, labels. And I usually take one off. But this one, this one, yeah, it's a weird shape. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. We have, oh, yeah, receipt. And then I guess it's time to open all the rest of these. Got another receipt. And another family. And then another package you can see here where I took off the UPS sticker. I think I have a majority of this week's releases. Okay, yeah. And then last but not least, one of these. Which I'm just going to take the shortcut of... Before we go through the pile, we have one non-anime thing, and that's a transistor. Which, uh, my brother didn't like it. And he never played Bastion. I think that's the game to compare this to, because they were both made by the same person, and they have the same general idea. But, I know Bastion is generally better well-received. That said, you know, I've already taken the cartridge out and moved it into a thing, but... You know, I have the limited run game card, which is actually kind of pretty, and it comes with an instruction manual. But you know, that's the idea of limited run games, is physical runs. Alright, so going through the anime, we have Ulysses, Jean d'Arc, and the Alchemist Knight. Let's look under the sticker to see if there's any sexy full metal alchemists. No, but there's a little knee there, I guess. And it looks kind of pretty, although... Uh, it kind of also looks like an anime made for the excuse of having cute girls doing cute battle things. Battle shoujo, maybe? I don't know. Regions A and B. Uh, we got English dub. Um, this is Blu-ray only. Okay, that's good to know. I wasn't seeing any list of special features, so it's probably just the standards. Or I'm a blind. Oh, actually, it says special features right here. Japanese promo, Texas opening and closing, song, 10 unique versions. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's usually a good sign when an anime is going to put budget into unique uh, op-eds. Now that's sliding around, and that is cute. And I'm going to take this, put that around, and take a look at... Yeah. Okay, yeah, so th that does support my um, original hypothesis that this is just an excuse to have cute female figures. It might also be good. I don't know. The name doesn't immediately seem familiar outside of the fact that Ulysses it seems to be some sort of common fictional name, for lack of better words. I don't know. I can't think of the words. This is Middle Management Blues, Mr. Togawa, Tonegawa. Which I'm actually kind of curious about. Lone Sharking, Games of Death, and Ultimate Evil. So, Lone Sharking kind of doesn't sound like what I thought when it said Middle Management. Usually Middle Management managers are in the middle between people and the managers that manage them or something. I don't know. Disc one, disc two, and disc three. 
disc three ending at episode 24 so it's a two core thing in a single box on the back we have English audio region A 24 episodes on three discs I see special features right there which is clean opening and closing animations pretty good Genius Party and Genius Party Beyond, which I do believe are anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's looking very anime. Uh, what am I feeling there? Oh, uh, okay, just a little rough in the thing. Let's see, Region A there. Blu ray video, audio, Japanese, subtitles in English. So this is Japanese with English subtitles. I'm not seeing much in the way of special features, but I think these are two movies, so it's not as common for those to be packed with uh, special features. 12 impacts by 12 directors. Interesting. So probably their collection of works. All on one disc. Maybe not movies. Definitely an interesting looking thing. Let's see, was there running time back here? I don't know. Next up we have Golden Kamui. This is season two. You know, this is good. I've been getting hungry lately. I need to see this anime with food stuff going on. And probably I would expect the pacing. Let's get some sexy man arm onto this. Whoa, that thing does not want to come off. Wow, they don't want us to see his arm. Let's see if I can do this or that. Just a little bit there at the end. There you go, some sexy arm. Uh, certainly not. All right. Um, special features: Golden Travelog Theater Animated Shorts. So, 13 commentary, Texas opening, closing, promo video, and commercial collections. And then, ooh, when the inside is different. Okay, this feels thick, but you know what? I think that's to be expected. And you know what, it also occurs to me that I didn't double check the obvious things. Because I remember from last time that yes, it is dubbed. Because I was watching it dubbed. I did mention Region A. There's a dub. This one has Blu-ray and DVD versions. Based on the award-winning manga. Hmm. Interesting. We've got inserts on the inside. So we got this booklet. Ooh, I saw the character designs. There's some pages there flipping a little quick. We have person. We have Blu-ray 2. That goes to episode 24. We've got DVD 1 and 2. We have more people. Next up we have Phoenix, perfect collection on Blu-ray. Oh wow, that's some tenacious plastic. Well that's why I didn't go out of my way to completely put this away. And now I can move it just a little bit. It all off. So this is a collection of various short stories related, or various episodes that are shorter stories related to Phoenix, Legends of Phoenix, Application of Phoenix. You see a Region A down there. Hmm. Who released this? This doesn't look familiar. This is... Whoa! Anime Works. An old Media Blasters one. 
Hmm. Well, not an old media, but I haven't seen Media Blasters release stuff very often. So I see various dubs, slates. That's weird. I would think that's. Hmm. I don't know. I'm guessing maybe like, um, titles and stuff like that. Let's see, since this is a Blu ray release of this. It's not like burn on demand or anything like that. I do feel like Media Blasters has done stuff like that. But that's interesting. And then last but not least comes Tata Never Falls in Love. Which I have to admit, this already kind of looks curious. I don't know if it actually is good. You know, sometimes you see this and you're like, oh, maybe this is a slice of life that I'll really like. And, you know, sometimes I find that Slice of Life can be very hit or miss. You can have something that uh, most people find wholesome. I see a Region A. I see an English dub. Two discs. Compact disc. This means this came with... I don't even know what I got. It looks like I got the right version, now. This is a complete collection. And I think we already covered that information. Um, special features. Clean opening and closing animations also available. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Disc 1, disc 2. Looks like a 12 episode series. Does that say 12? Episode 12? That says 13. So it's a 13 episode series. All 13 episodes on two discs. Yep. Hmm. I feel like that's misaligned. It could be aligned better, but disc 1. Two. Let's put that there and go through it like this. Here we have a disc one and a disc two soundtrack. Lots of songs. Soundtrack one through twenty two. No, that's one dash two two and then one dash two three. Disc one, disc two. Hmm. Well, I hope it's got good music and I really enjoy listening to it. I like adding new songs to my my um, thing. Because usually it means I found a song that I enjoy. I was going to say, it strikes me as a friend character in the... Well, she looks like a lolly, but she's also... I'm wondering if she's a short person. You can never really tell with anime until you see what they decide to do. So sometimes they'll take um, adult people and actually draw them all lolly. Hmm. Okay, well, it looks like another um, another thing that you put on the thing. A coaster. So a coaster, and then we have cards. Which I never take out of the box because reasons. Mostly it's just time consuming to do so. Anyways, let's get this back in there. Not a bad haul. Here's this week's anime DVD collection update. Uh, I think I had started watching season three of My Hero Academia, which I think means the only anime I've watched this past week is the rest of season three of My Hero Academia. And it was pretty good. Um, I guess it went in directions I wasn't expecting. I don't know if I can elaborate because I don't want to elaborate because that would be spoiler. Oh yeah, I was wondering what this greenish thing on the floor was and I forgot that the one anime came in the weird box with the weird stuff. Anyways, um, I'm trying to remember exactly where it was at the very end of the season. But it's, it's good. It's... Stuff is happening, stuff is getting done. The series is remaining interesting, it's going interesting directions, it's keeping us, the viewers, engaged. It's doing a really good job of expanding the cast of characters that are introduced to us and making the universe bigger, while at the same time, okay, yeah, that's how it ended, and I don't know where it's going to go from there, because, um, 
It's a bit of a calm. It's not like a third act. But sometimes you can have series that actually follow like a four act structure or something like that. I think, um, I think Shiki, I was thinking, one of the nice things about it, especially with the extra two side episodes mixed in where they're supposed to be, it kind of follows a really good act structure where you're like, well, this is this thing, and this is this thing, and this is this thing, and then this is this thing. <coughs> it's kind of refreshing. Um, you don't see that a whole lot with series. It's kind of hard to do. But... Uh, the fact that I'm not seeing it with My Hero Academia is no surprise. Instead, it just tends to be very entertaining on an episode-to-episode -episode basis. But I did finally get to see... Okay, so I think last week I had watched the My Hero Academia movie Two Heroes. And now, for timing-wise, I would say that probably the best time to watch it is during Season 3. Like, it doesn't really cover anything that's important in the grand scheme of things. And then Season 3... It only really comes up in an episode that's designed to get people interested in going to the theater and watching the movie, and it's a side episode that has nothing to do with the main story. So, it's not set up for you to need to watch it, and it's not set up so that you don't have to, and I think, context-wise, it's probably okay to watch it um, before the third season. It's just... You're gonna put it off. Oh, Jesus. I'm yelling. Or not yelling, yawning. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah, it definitely ended at a place where it's like, well, I don't know where it's going to go from here because, you know, it kind of introduced some new characters. Not really antagonistic stuff. There's some antagonistic stuff being developed. And the end of Season 2 was kind of similar in that regard. How did the good guys end Season 2? I'm trying to remember. It's... It was an interesting season. It's it it kind it worked. I I don't know what else to say. Cause anything else, I definitely have to talk about details of what I saw, and I don't want to, cause that's a spoiler. So then, like I said, I didn't really watch anything else. Um, I did watch a couple episodes of Static Shock with that one friend. Uh, I finally saw the trailer for Steven Universe season six, which I think is called Steven Universe Future. Or not the trailer, the teaser, and I'm definitely curious. Huh. Huh, excuse me. Jeez. As you can see, I'm a little yawny, sleep deprived. That has to do with avatar creation stuff in VR chat and Unity and Blender. Because, um. I guess last week I finally got the final piece on an avatar to start investigating some mechanics of how certain things I've seen characters do work, how they're added, how they function underneath the covers, why they break in um, quests, and how some people have found ways to work around that. Like, the fi I'm talking about the finger drawing in particular, and yeah, you can, it looks like you can mostly get it working in quest, which is good. But, uh, that basically means that I wrapped up enough of that avatar where I can upload a quest version of it because there's no more major features. Instead, there's just the little tweaks which I can do to the PC and quest versions at the same time as necessary. And so I'm pretty much done with that avatar until um, that person gets an HTC Vive and starts wearing the avatar and then starts having preferences in terms of how they want it to behave. That would be good. So basically it meant that last night I finally started working on a um, an autumn version of my main avatar, which is basically, you know, Halloween, but if you do Halloween stuff right and go with the autumn fall theme, then yeah, if you hear that rumbling that is thunder outside, there is a storm rolling in. So yeah, if I go with a kind of an orangish theme, then it works for both Halloween and for um, <clears throat> Thanksgiving. So it's a good autumn outfit. And I ran into a problem where I accidentally um, destroyed my blend shapes. Like, I didn't delete them, it just they got mapped to different polygons than they were before, so the avatar was warping out of shape in weird ways instead of talking or blinking. So, um... <clears throat> 
And uh, I don't know exactly what caused it, but I am guessing it has to do with the way I've edited it. Because I put a hat on it, and this time I'm getting a better idea of how to um, carve off parts of the head so that... Um, so that instead of deleting a polygon that's just a little bit under there, you can actually divide the polygons. Technically, you're dividing the faces, and the, those probably get you know, divided into a couple polygons. So I'm probably slightly increasing the number of polygons by doing that, but I'm making it where the hair that gets cut off does not, the polygon that gets destroyed does not come down to here. And then I was able to, around 2 a.m. last night, figure out um, or get everything together where I was able to delete the character from Blender with the destroyed stuff, re-import them, um, do all the fixes and tweaks necessary to make it VR chat usable and cut the hair this time without destroying the blend shapes which is good which means probably a, once I start uploading this video I might actually upload that character to VR chat to make sure everything works I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to do but I don't know, because I've got some animation stuff to play around for it, but I can do that after I've uploaded it, because animation stuff is simple, especially since if I'm, one of the things I'm playing around with right now is adding animation and sound mixtures, and I guess you don't want to do too, go too crazy with adding audio, because that can just inflate the file size of the um, avatar probably pretty quickly, like if you had an entire song, then you have to have that entire song uploaded with your avatar as part of the avatar. So, I guess the idea is maybe song clip bits for a couple things in one long song for one thing. <clears throat> it's really thundering outside. Wow. Huh. Anyways, it's been fun playing with and learning this stuff, especially since as I'm learning some of the nuances of the tools, I'm learning important and valuable things, and I'm working faster. Like, it was a lot quicker for me to trim the hair the second time once I knew, okay, I need to create these lines, and then I need to split the selected area off from everything else so they're not part of those faces, and then I can delete the edges and the vertexes, vertices, or the edges and the faces, which would just clear all those out, leaving those polygons gone and no longer peeking through the hair at the wrong point so you know, I was able to trim it. Yeah, it's all good and I have a couple of other candidates for things I'm going to upload and I haven't even tried the important thing yet of taking my current model and seeing how many of the clothes I can remove. I know that sounds more perverted. I mean it sounds perverted completely but for those of you who are kind of understanding why I would be interested in that you know, it probably won't come as a surprise when I say it's useful because if I'm going to try and have the character wearing completely different outfits, like if I'm going to try and put them on in a swimsuit or maybe some sort of onesie or something like that, then knowing how much of the avatar I have to work with is good because I kind of suspect I can delete like the dress, the book, the ribbons, probably the sleeves. But I don't think the sleeves are their own. No, they're probably their own mesh group. So what I can probably do is separate it by meshes and then delete things that are clearly um, not part of the mesh. I might not be able to delete the headband because I don't think there's anything there underneath it. Which is okay because then it means the character has a very consistent head, I guess. But that, that's what I want to do. I want to find out what I can work with for this avatar. And I guess there's two versions of the model, so I would have to look at both. And I should also probably work on uploading some models for my brother. He hasn't played VR Chat since, but like he's got some shaggy avatars, and you know he really likes them. And if I can start making shaggy avatars for him, then I can. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because you could do that. That'd be pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I was just thinking, I could probably chop Shaggy's head off and put it on other bodies, 
but if I use the tricks I just used in Blender, I might be able to do it while preserving um, the vertex groups for the face in general, which would allow me to use those even though he gets put on another avatar. I don't know. That's an interesting thing to try later. Some of y'all might have done this before and said, oh no, that's not going to work. I, I don't know what will happen if you tell me. Because part of what I'm trying to do here is also understand why I do certain things and how they work. So, for example, when I was using the snail marker, um, I wanted to understand how it worked, what was being set up for me and all that stuff. And now I understand why all the various... Well, I don't understand why all the various parts are there. I think some of that has to do with trail stuff, but I do understand that um, snail markers are actually just continuously drawing. It's just if they're not drawing in front of you right here, then they're drawing a billion miles that way. And the special snail marker shader just hides the fact that the pointer jumps from there to here. Which is why when you go to quest and you have you can't use that shader, you have to use a default one, you run into the problem where um, you, know, you can see the lines as it jumps to and from your finger point in, into infinity. And the fix involves taking advantage of the fact that those lines are really long and you use an, adi an additive shader and you use a map that causes the edges of it to be transparent. You know, basically a white box with a black border. And you just do a couple things to make sure that's more likely than not to work. Cool beans. Uh. That said, I think I've been rambling a bit. I am feeling tired, but I don't know if I'm going to sleep. We have Zelda Four Swords Adventures, I think, when my brother and friends arrive. So, I guess I'm going to wrap up this video and let y'all go. Y'all, have a nice week.